Following on from Antonio Conte's sacking, leaving by mutual consent, whichever way you want to look at it, we, as Tottenham fans, were looking for a reaction. So the question is, did we get one? No, clearly we didn't get one. What we got was yet another example of lacklustre, poor performance playing in exactly the same way that we've been playing which kind of demonstrates that Stellini taking over is probably not for the best because actually he's still gonna do the same things and play the same way and clearly what Conte said about the players uh, lacking um, mental strength was clear for everyone to see so prior to the to the game on Monday, I did a um, a little video with some guys from um, an Everton YouTube channel across the park, and we were talking about different things. And my I guess my um, view of what the score was going to be, what kind of performance we were going to get, was based on what Tottenham turned up. What, what would we learn from Conte moving on and so on? And my prediction was a 1-1, 2-2 draw, something along that, that line. I didn't think that we would not be able to concede. But I did feel that with a player like Harry Kane, we had an opportunity to pull something out of the bag at some point. A draw is no good for either side. And when they say um, the table doesn't lie, that's that's really is bullshit because Everton are now out of the bottom three and Tottenham are into the top four. But given the amount of clubs around us that have games in hand, it really is a false position. It really is a false position because we could end up sixth, seventh, you know, at best if the other teams win their win their games. And I know they've got to win their games, right? But the reality is, until those games are played, you don't know where you really are. So, it's just another absolute diabolical time to be a Tottenham fan. And in the in the South Dorset Spurs um, WhatsApp group, lots of people are already talking about definitely not um, taking their season ticket option again next season. Which is really sad to see. It's a, it's a real sad situation. But it is one you really have to consider. Considering you can get tickets for matches pretty much all the time. Regardless of, of how big a game it is. What's the point in paying out that money in advance? For games that you probably don't want to go to. Or you can't go to. I mean, When you consider Thursday night playing Manchester United. Unless you live locally or you can get loads of time off from work. That's going to be a difficult game to go to. So that's another game you, you won't get to see. Um, and there's been a few of them played at different times that make it quite difficult, for, for certainly for people like me, to get to. Um, so what's the benefit? What's the benefit of having a season ticket um, when, you, when you can get a ticket anyway? Pick out the games you want to when you feel, when you feel mentally up for it because this is almost a mental a mental infliction that you support Tottenham because actually mentally it can drive you crazy and 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 affect your mood for the week for the month you know all the time so i watched the game with uh, some of my friends uh, from SDS at the at the local club and and to be honest with you the first half it was so boring that we ended up talking about sharknado as a film and the benefits of, of those kind of what was it shark to puss or something that that um ian was talking about so it, it's uh it, it was that bad that, that we were kind of talking about all kinds of rubbish um and so when the game kind of got into the second half and it started getting worse and, and that there was light at the end of the tunnel when we got a penalty <sighs> If you can call it a penalty in the in today's game, yeah, it's a penalty. But it just, you know, it is so soft these days for that sort of thing. 
And Harry Kane steps up and he does the business and, and puts it away. It's from that point that actually things get so bad, so much worse in terms of sitting back, inviting pressure, pl- the, the insistence on passing the ball around your own six yard box and passing it across, you know, across in front of your goal whilst there's, player, whilst there's players lurking. It's an absolute mental way of playing when you just don't have the skill to do it. You just don't have the skill to do it. You, you know, ever uh, fighting for their lives, the Southampton, they're going to give it up. They're not going to roll over for you. This is a Sean Dyche team. And as much as I dislike Sean Dyche, the guy's a decent manager. He does a decent job. He plays the way he needs to play. He plays to his strengths and so on. And... And ultimately, they got what they deserved. In fact, they probably got less than they deserved because I felt that at times, Everton were probably the masters of their own downfall because they just couldn't finish. They got into some good positions and were skying the ball left, right and centre. Had they had a better strike in their team, that they probably could have got more out of that game and deservedly so. So, you know, substitutions again. You know, Sanchez... The guy, and I hate to point out specific players because it is unfair because these guys are professional, but he he's let us down so many times. You're playing him on the left of, of a back three. He can't play there. I mean, you can barely play on the right of a three. So putting him on the left of a three, he's just asking for trouble. When his passing was wayward, he was out of position, it was just poor. And then... Son getting until the 82nd minute before he's brought off is another absolute tra- travesty. I love Sonny. I think he's a great player. He's been a really good servant to the club. I love his the infectiousness that he brings, and, and clearly he's loved by everybody. But he is having a stinker, an absolute stinker of a season. And so when it's not working, you've got to try something different. But that's something different turns out to be Lucas Moura, who's leaving at the end of the season. What are we messing about like that for? Especially when you've got a guy on the bench who joined the club, came for one as a sub, scored. We've never seen him since. Never seen him since. And he was due to sign Everton. And I was talking to, like I said, these Everton guys, and they were like, you know what's going to happen? Dan Juma and Richarlison are going to play and they're going to score. It'll be just our Everton's luck. Not if, not if they're A, injured, and B, can't get on the pitch. What, what sense is that? Why would you not try something different if it's not working? Some different personnel. That, uh, the only thing I can imagine is that there must be some kind of clause that if he plays more than half a game, you have to buy him. And they're not convinced. <laughs> it's got to be something as as that surely for, for that not to happen and then Lucas comes in I don't think it was malicious I don't think he was trying to do what he did but it's an ill-timed stupid um, tackle of no threat and you come in and you equal up the equal up the the play by getting yourself sent off and, and to be honest with you and and they get a yellow card for it because it's ill timed but not not on purpose and all the rest of it. I don't think he's got any I don't think he's got any complaint about being sent off, but I have seen a lot of them given as a yellow card. But I think the ref probably thought to himself, I need to even this up because the sending off and I'm coming on to that now, the sending off of the core again, what is he thinking? It absolutely stupid. Absolutely stupid to raise your hands like that. Six of one, half a dozen of another in a normal situation, that, that's handbags. Now, we can all talk about Kane rolling around on the floor and all the rest of it. And I, as a Tottenham fan, as, is as annoyed at it as anyone because it's just stupid gamesmanship. He's poked you in the eye. You don't need to roll around on the floor. You're gasping, thinking, oh, for God's sake, that really hurts. Oh, I don't know, whatever. 
that's what happened. But to fall on the floor in a theatrical way that he did is not needed. The reality is they do it because it's the only way that it gives the refs strong enough to make that kind of decision to send the player off for doing something stupid. Now, it's not about how hard he hits or, or all that sort of stuff. It's about the fact that you're raising your hands to another person's face. It's a sending off. We understand it. Everyone knows it. Kane went in strong, missed the ball, uh, got the ball off a player who's gone down. Should he have done that? Did he need to do that? I guess if you're if you're chasing and you're tackling, it happened. I think that was malicious. And then to and then um, the core goes into into him, and there's a little bit of a scuffle, a bit of shirt pulling. But for him to raise his hands the way he did, it's a stupid thing to do, and could have put his club in in real in real trouble because it's not long after that that you you know you're playing against ten men, they're up against it. You get your penalty, and it could have been good night, sweetheart. Luckily for them, they're playing Dr. Tottenham. So Dr. Tottenham will see you now and will give you a point. We'll, we'll gift it to you. Great strike by Keane. Absolute uh, a belter of a ball. And that's because you've got Skippy diving in and missing it totally. You've got Sanchez turning his back away from it. And you've got Hugo not getting anywhere near it, standing, you know, flat-footed in the goal, not even making an attempt. And so there you have it. You're back to a 1-1 a, a draw, which helps nobody. Helps you for a week until the next next set of fixtures. But that's it. That's it. Now, I, I, I don't want Everton, Everton to go down a decent club. I think they're very similar uh, to Tottenham in a lot of ways. I think there's, I'd much rather see you get, get relegated than them. I don't want to see that at our expense. But like I said, I'm not, I'm not dreaming of the Champions League. It's not the be-all and end-all to me. It's not like, oh, you want to be in the Champions League because you players and because we've, it's not the case of Tottenham. So for me, it doesn't matter. This season is over. The season was over as soon as we went the Champions League and in fact it probably was over when we went out of the FA Cup because I thought that's probably our only chance of getting anything out of this season so another another really really disappointing and it's about the performance it's not about the result ultimately it's about the performance and then when you've got Stellini coming out saying that we've we played well and all I don't know what you're watching either you might want these because from where I was sitting I would have much rather been watching um Shark to pussy than than Tottenham versus Everton because it was an appalling game, um, all in the midfield, loads of you know loose passing and no cohesion, no decent decent threads or anything like that. The only thing I thought came out of the game which I thought was decent was that Perisic actually put the ball in the in the um, in the box on a couple of occasions, decent decent opportunities. Poro I thought made some made some good opportunities. But with not an awful lot at the end. So the question has to be asked: Dare dare Tottenham hike the prices of the of the season tickets when there's so many season ticket holders sort of saying, "You know what? I ain't doing it to myself. I ain't doing it to myself." But if you give up your season ticket now, you're never going to get one back. And there's always the hope that you're going to get better at some point. That you're get a better manager. And, and go on a run and really sort of improve and so on. Big decisions to be made. Big decisions to be made. Let's be honest with you. You know, we've lost our manager. Potter's left Chelsea. Um, so that looks that looks more likely to be Nagels when going there. So all the Tottenham fans that were were hanging on to the idea of him coming to Tottenham. I would give that up. I mean, it, it, when you think about it, right? Chelsea are, are kind of going now. They spent loads of money. You're in a in a crisis, which isn't spoken about very much, to be fair. But they're more likely to be able to attract a top class coach than Tottenham, who are sitting in fourth with uh, Harry Kane leading the line. It kind of speaks volumes, doesn't it? That they're more likely to go there. They are to come to Tottenham. Tell me 
how far how our stock has fallen. And there's only one person responsible for that, and that's Daniel Levy. The, the mismanagement of the football inside of the club is, is, is so clear to everyone but him. And I said when they appointed Conte that this was, this was Daniel Levy's last chance to really get this right, because I don't see where we go from here. We are basically looking back, looking down, and looking for someone to come in and save us. And the idea of Brendan Rodgers fills me with despair, to be honest with you. He might have won, he might have won cups in, in Scotland, which, let's face it, is a tin pot league. Um, and he may have won the FA Cup with, with Leicester, which is more than we've done in the last 20 years. Personally, I, don't, I, I just don't like the man. I, I, don't, I don't think he's right for the club. Up with that's the sort of person we're going to end up with someone who who will work within Levy's structure and we're we're liable to get more of the same. That's not going to keep players like Harry Kane at your club. And Harry Kane in time will leave us really really short. It's not often I agree with the dice, but when he says Tottenham will be a mid table club without Harry Kane, as much as I dislike hearing it, it's not. It's not untrue. So where do we go from here? It's it's such such a problem. We've got such a big uh, decision to make as a club as to where we go, how we get our identity back, where we go from here. Because this could all come crush. There is in the very near future, and it does worry me. It does worry me. I've got to be honest. But it the fact that it's our club, and uh, and unfortunately, the newest grand. Brody is, is going to be indoctrinated in it and put him for pain. Sorry, buddy. But there you go. We just move on. I'll be at the game on, on Saturday for my sins, um, mainly, for the, mainly for the company, the friendship and the laugh that I have with the people around it. The 90 minutes is just a distraction. That could be a very, very difficult day. And uh, I suspect it's going to be a very, very difficult day for Mr. Levy. I think you're going to hear it loud. I think you're going to hear it loud this weekend, especially if we go behind. Interesting times ahead. Let's keep the faith, though. Up the Spurs.